everyone. How are you? Welcome to our recovery reset class. I feel like we need it today and this week. We've worked hard this week. Uh, welcome to the dirtiest dog on the planet who just ran in front of me and in front of the scooter in the dirt. Did you run? Yeah. Are you the dirtiest dog on the planet? You are. Did you do a great job? You really did. You didn't cut me off or at all. You just trotted right along, you listened, you got some good treats for it, you did. Can you say hello? Is this your way of saying hello? Okay, flashlight says hello. <laughs> uh, yes, he is the best boy. He's so dirty. I am trying not to get mad at him for being on the mat right now because he was such a good boy today. Um, but, you know, of course he has to follow it up with some kind of dog-like behavior, you know? All right, so we're here. You're here. Oh my God, Flash, for real though. I wiped you down and now you left dirt. Yeah, brush it off with your tail. It'll be great. You all. Um, I'm gonna get this little towel to wipe the dirt off. <laughs> yeah, shake it out. Just, you know, shake it out. He thinks this is a toy too. So get out your... Um, Get out your ball. <laughs> We're gonna do a movement class. It's largely <laughs> recovery based. <laughs> Come here, hey, give me that. <laughs> I don't know what's into him lately. Come here, I have to wipe the dirt off. <laughs> All right, go, get out of here. <laughs> Gather up your ball, everyone. <laughs> Oh, it's like literally never a dull moment, you all. Never a dull moment. All right, um, if there are any special requests for today's class, other than all the flashlight content there is, uh, please drop it in the chat, because I can see it, and we'll get ready. Are you gonna do this the whole time? Yeah, you are. Okay, ready? Go away! <laughs> okay. This is why we need recovery, because life has been this mode all week. Um, <laughs> the good news is I am feeling much better, but the other news is, you know, life, life happens. All right. Can you go lay down, please? I love you. Can you have a kiss? Thank you. Can you go lay down? Thank you. All right. Let's take a little gentle bounce, hands on the knees, wide legs, shake it off. Remember when we talked about uh, stress management strategies? Weirdly, shaking is one of those ones that actually is extremely effective. And I watch him do it all the time, like after play, after um, pretty much any engagement with another dog where there's like heightened emotions and adrenaline. I don't know if, how emotional they get, you know, but heightened, heightened reactions. I'm not gonna make eye contact. He's looking at me like, you want, you want me to come back for more? Good, all right, lower back, shoulders. <laughs> the girls are barking at the TV. I love it. Yes, flashlight. You know, we, I just dropped all that merch um, on my site and I realized like, duh. We need flashlight merch. I've got the perfect like picture of his face. It's actually a gif or jif or however you say it on Instagram, but I'll, I'll drop a flashlight merch sweatshirt or something. Like, uh, what, should we, what's the, what should it be? It should be something like keep it, keep it positive or always be wagging. I don't know. <laughs> All right, so we're just doing a gentle bounce right now. We're not killing time by any means, a little bit maybe. No, we're doing a gentle bounce just to get a little lymph flow happening, just to kind of stimulate our nervous system, shake off anything that doesn't need to be there. So as we get into a little bit more of our motion, we can start to be, you know, just a bit more calm and collected. So if you're feeling comfortable, and you've had your hands on your knees. Let's go ahead and just see if you can let them drape down by the side. And I'm gonna move my legs. Uh, oh, a fanny pack with flashlight's face on it. That's it, that's it. Yeah, done and done. I will have it up by today. <laughs> now, and I just did a huge order too, so now I need to do another one. Uh, <laughs> we shall see. All right, so I like to think of this as like, sloughing 
energetic sloughing, we'll call it. It's a matter of just allowing just those small annoyances that might be in the back of your mind, maybe in the front of your mind, that maybe you're carrying around in your neck and shoulders. And it's not something that you're violently battling. I, I often feel like when those annoyances, when those little like consistent, persistent, just irritations are there, I often feel like going at it with, you know, guns blazing is not maybe the way to do it effectively. Often it's like, what do they say? Speak softly and carry a big stick. It's a, kind of that idea if I'm remembering it right. Yeah. So imagine that your arms were like two very long salt shakers. Okay. And for the next 10, 15 seconds or so, your goal is to empty them from top to fingertip. Just let the salt shake out. Whatever beat you want, feel all of that extra tiny granules of stress, maybe tension. Just let it go and know that we've been bouncing for just about three minutes now. And anything over two minutes is a really amazing engagement into helping our lymph become stimulated to flow, increasing circulation, etc. All right, maybe we're down to about the wrist. Let's take the next few seconds to shake out those granules. Just cover the floor and then know that we'll breeze it away, yeah? For two and then for one. All right, so keep a gentle bounce going. Maybe turn down the volume on your bounce just a little bit. Let's rotate your palms away. So thumbs turn to the back and then palms towards. Let's go ahead and turn the thumbs to the back again, but this time the top of your hand is facing into the ball. So we're just gonna turn all the way and then rotate all the way in. And think of it happening from the very top of your arm, around your humerus, your bicep and tricep. Good, and if you don't wanna to bounce today, you don't have to. I just love the, I just like the, I feel like it's like a, a, a physical shower. <laughs> you know, just kinda of cleans out that energy. Rotating it in, good. And rotating it out. Let's do one more of each. Let's go in. Yes. And all the way out. Good. Keep that bounce going. Let's reach up slowly, taking your arms as high as they want to go right now, and then pressing all the way down. Good. And lifting up. And pressing all the way down. Good. That's it. Breathing, filling up those lungs. And just more than anything, exploring the space around you, yeah? So just seeing what's there. Good. All right, right arm forward, left arm back. So we're gonna reach, switch, reach, switch. Good, just getting really ready, mobile in our joints, warm in our joints so we can practice a little more mobility. Good, reach. And reach. Let's go for eight. And seven. Six. And five. Four. I'm smiling because I always think that anybody who comes into this channel, too, <laughs> in one, both arms come forward. Let's open our arms out to the side and bring it back to the front. I always think that I, I actually expect there to be a little bit of an eye roll, meaning, like, what's all this? all this bouncing what's all this movement but the th thing that makes me smile is like we are ahead of the game <laughs> doing the gentle stuff we're ahead of the game in terms of health and uh, even like a huge study just came out if you're on my mailing list you saw me reference it 
good. Let's go one more time out to the side. We're gonna just bring our arms up to a goal post and just rotate down and then lift back up. So Lululemon actually did a global well-being study and it polled and surveyed multiple countries. I don't think they got every single country in the world, but the major countries for sure. Um, they looked at age demographics, the difference of definitions of well-being for younger folks, Gen Z to older folks, boomers and Gen X. And they really got a cross-section of lots of um, interesting facts. Last two, all the way up. Good, last one, good. Let it come down, go back to your salt shaker and just for the last few seconds, just let it shake out. So overwhelmingly, what they found is that a lot of people feel like there's a barrier to well-being, especially the aspects that support it, like movement. Let's calm the bounce down. But I think that um, a lot of times, and that this is said without blame, I just think that we make it so hard to move, like it's gotta be this, it's gotta have this energy, we've gotta do this protein shake before, we've gotta wear this gear, we've gotta have this uh, accessory, and then before you know, know it, you've already like, you're missing one thing and then it doesn't feel like you can do it at all. And I think that's a major contributing factor. So keeping it easy, bouncing a ball, yeah, it works. So take your elbow down onto your right side, legs come wide, we're gonna just stretch up over to the right, pull your elbow down into your hip pocket, Feel your shoulder come down on this side, a tiny little side bend. Breathe into the side, pull it all the way down. We're just looking to mobilize our shoulder blade, which just means move it. Yeah. So if you try to put your movement practice in a perfect little box, where it's gotta look, sound, feel a certain way, you don't give yourself permission to play, or to just like show up, you know, it's gotta, you, you put all these hurdles in front of it, then yeah, there's huge barriers to entry. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, you know, some of the barriers to entry that are like some people literally are working two jobs to support their family and they don't have the time. It's one of the reasons why I like to stream on YouTube for free. It's just in case anybody's out there taking the replay later on. Like this is for you. It's there. It's available, it'll stay there. Let's go for two. And then last one. And pull it all the way down. Switching sides, we're gonna reach over. And then pull all the way down. But yeah, I suppose the ultimate point that I'm getting after is like sometimes we make it so precious. And believe me, I am no stranger to, from a teaching perspective, precious teaching. In fact, I spent way too many years doing it because I thought that that was the way, you know, that's how I learned. Then I realized after finding out that indeed I am a flawed human being, <laughs> turns out, tried to avoid that truth for a long time. But you know, you find out that there's some things that um, are more precious than the perfection of your practice, like namely your health, your well-being, your ability to smile, to find some delight every single day, yeah? Good. All right, last one. Excellent, all right. Let's do one more thing. Walk your feet in. Hands are gonna go onto your knees with your fingertips facing each other. And then what I want you to do is no pain here. So just a little bit if you have any discomfort or tension. If there's pain, don't do this one. It shouldn't cause pain, but I just wanna give that caveat. Turn your fingers inward, look down at your fingertips, and continue to turn your wrists as far as you can, maybe it's a little, maybe it's a lot, until your elbows are starting to point forward. If you're facing the screen, point them towards me. In this position, you should feel a rounding in your back and your, a separation of your shoulder blades. And then we're gonna do the opposite. You're gonna sit up tall, turn your fingertips away, and bring your elbows in as close as you can here without letting your chest collapse. So it's really just that sense of feeling your shoulder blades coming together on your back. And we're just gonna use this position to give us a focal point. So rotate your fingertips in, look down, elbows widen and come forward, the back rounds. And then like you're just turning a little knob 
I'm letting my elbows come in front, feeling my shoulder blades squeeze towards the center of my back. They don't move a ton. There's just a sense of like the side of the back muscles. Stretching as you go forward. Good. And then rotating. I'm lifting my chest, I'm pressing my elbows towards each other, opening up and then squeezing my arms into my sides, keeping the chest open. I hope this is making sense. It makes sense to my body, but it's not actually an exercise that exists, so sometimes we gotta figure out the right words, yeah? Good. Mostly it's about engaging the underarms, engaging the side and back shoulder blade muscles. Let's go two more times, rounding forward. And then rolling back. Good, and then release and relax. Okay, shake it out if you need to. We're gonna go into some arm circles and we're gonna take this in the mindset of something called a controlled articulated uh, range of motion. So some people call it rotation. So a C-A-R. So we're going to think about moving from the shoulder blade and I'll take this to the side Whoops, to show you. So as we're down by the side, you're gonna reach down feeling your shoulder blade engage, your armpit engage. And then we're gonna start to move forward. Now, it's almost like you're playing a consistent tug of war. So as you reach down, you're engaging. And as you reach forward, it's like you're still trying to reach down, but you're also reaching forward. And because you're doing those two things at once, you're creating a, a bit of tension in your arm. When you get to this chest height, you're gonna to continue to reach forward, see how my shoulder blade starts to wrap and slide and spread. And so now I'm reaching forward and then I'm gonna take it up, but I'm still reaching forward. So again, there's tension around the shoulder. I'm gonna lift that shoulder as high as I can to my ear and then bring it back as far as I can. And once I can no longer go back, then I'll start to turn my hand so that I complete the circle, reaching as far back as I possibly can and then bringing it down. So imagine in every position, you've got a person, a force, pulling your arm in that position. As you're reaching down, they're pulling it down. Now that person keeps pulling down as the next one pulls you forward, and that person keeps pulling forward as the next one pulls you up, and so on and so forth, okay? We're only gonna do five in each direction, but it's the concentration that helps get us into the technical aspect that's gonna address the shoulder in a really good way, I hope, okay? The rule of thumb is, again, if there's pain, discomfort, lessen the range, make it smaller, make it easier on yourself, and let's see what happens, all right? Start by reaching down, good. And then reaching forward, good. And then reaching all the way up to the sky, Bring it back, bring the shoulder blade back, and when you can no longer bring it back, then let the hand turn and bring it down. And then bring it down as soon as you can. Bring that shoulder blade down. Reach it forward. Good, reach it up, shoulder to the ear. Start to reach it back, and then turn. That's it. Now, it's not uncommon for this to make you hot, so enjoy it. Good. Yes, Tracy says, yeah, that you were working, killing yourself with other movements. Yeah, a lot of us get into that place where we think we have to, bigger, faster, stronger is the only way to gain benefit. And you know what's coming up? It's coming up that regular softer practices that take care of your well-being and feel good to your body actually um, they have lasting power, sticking power, because of the fact that your brain is a little more ready to accept <laughs> them, a little more willing, you're not doing an internal battle. Good, release, shake it out. Also, you gotta think about the objective, right? Like, are you going to run an Olympic trial? Then why are you doing that training program? Unless it brings you joy. I mean, you know, if you're, if you're a runner, like I love runners who love running. I watched them, you can tell their body was made for it. Mine, not so much. 
<laughs> you know? I like the idea of running, the doing of it, mm, not so much. Let's reverse this arm. All right, so reach down. You're gonna start to slide it back as far as you can. When you can no longer move back with your hand facing that way, then you can turn your palm away. Then we start to squeeze that shoulder blade, then we start to lift it up. We're gonna bring it back to face inward, and then we're gonna reach it way forward. Everything else is staying stable, yes. Again, this takes a, a little bit to complete these motions, but it is a very good way to find, to reset. And that's what we're here for, right? Recovery reset. I don't know that there's another full length class that I've come across, maybe in yoga, where we focus on recovery. I'm really proud of us that we've decided to make this a priority in our week. I feel like, you know, from an expert perspective, it, it could be the determining factor of how things shift and change over time because we're taking time to find our joints also we're not trying to cram everything into one session you know so we got three times a week where we're doing our thing we're cardioing we're so hoping to get back to bouncing i'm really really crossing my fingers that um by next week i might be able to do some just closed chain stuff so good all right shake it out and then just kind of I don't know if it's very evident on my shoulders. It feels very evident. <laughs> one feels very low and this one feels a little higher. So let's go ahead and do the other side. Take your breath, get ready, get set, let's go. Reach the arm down, feel the shoulder blade pull down. Reach forward, feel the shoulder blade sliding forward. Then lift up, feel the shoulder blade lifting up. Then reach back, feel the shoulder blade squeezing back. And then when you can no longer reach back, you could turn that palm down and reach all the way down. Now, look all, I'm not perfect at this. So the goal is always to keep the rest of your torso pretty still, not static, not like, uh, but to have a little bit of core strength here, connection that challenges your arm to move independently of the rest of your body. So that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, good. Good morning to everybody who is joining us. We're working on mobilizing our shoulders on and with the stability ball. We're gonna take it down to the mats shortly. Good. I had a weird sleep last night. We went to uh, the Chicago Fire game against Inter Miami, expecting to see Lionel Messi, but he's out with an injury. And I have to say, the Chicago Fire won 4-1 with such pristine finesse. I mean, it was just, the goals were so pretty. And since my son has been playing soccer, let's rest and then we'll go in the opposite direction. I've just become a fan and like, Oh, it was so satisfying, but so exhausting. Let's reverse, go the other way, especially walking around on a crutch in Soldier Field, um, and then just, you know, being out a little later than normal. I tend to be an early bedtime person. I like the sleep. So I slept in a weird way with my shoulder and it definitely wants to enjoy this movement. We're reversing, by the way. Good. I'm also teaching my first in-person class in like forever, like my first regular in-person class tonight. And so I'm, uh, it's really, it's really interesting. Cause you know, with you all, I get to monologue a lot as we go through our repetitions. I don't know that that happens in regular fitness classes, but I also know that that's not why they hired me, you know, to, they hired me for me, meaning I can probably get away with it. God. All right. Let's finish up our last one. It's feeling a little looser. Whew. Okay. One more in seated, then we're going to take it down to our knees. Bend your elbows at 90 degrees. 
bring your elbows up to shoulder height. They can also be down a little lower. We're gonna do a little arm circle, not really a circle, but we're gonna rotate our arms out to the side, palms face forward. Reach our arms up to the sky, fingertips come together. Rotate your palms facing you. If your elbows can come together, awesome. If not, no worries. Rotate them out, palms face forward. Keep your neck long, arms reach overhead. Still working with that same kind of resistance. Rotate towards you. It's always that idea that you're moving through the space like it's a solid substance, pressing through wet concrete. Yeah, mud. Good, yes. Hopefully we'll all sleep better tonight, yeah? Reaching down. Couple more, open wide. Wrapping it back, reach it up. Big stretch through the fingertips. Rotate in, that's it, pull down. Excellent. One more like this, reaching it out. Oh, reach it up and getting some little openings, some little movements happening that feel good. I hope you are too. Bring it all the way down and release. Ay, 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 okay. Let's take it down onto our knees next. So carefully come off the ball, come down onto my knee here. We're gonna do a little bit of stretching for the shoulder blades now, so a little more free flow. I'm feeling the warmth of my back. I'd love to know if you are too. It's good to know if that it's not just my experience that's driving us forward, so. Um, let's take our arms on the ball, hinge at your hips, and then stretch out. Thank you, Tracy. Stretch out. Now, I've got the four, my forearms on the ball here. And if you want a deeper stretch for your shoulders, you can certainly move the ball away from you so that your hands are on it. The idea is that you just allow your chest to stretch right through your shoulders, to drop down through your shoulders. Maybe your shoulder blades come together a little bit. And you just breathe for a moment, feeling your hips reach back, feeling your arms reach forward. And then when we're ready to come up, we're gonna curl the tail under. Sorry if that's loud, I'm shouting right into the microphone. And just kind of roll back up to the top. Open your hips, bring yourself all the way back to vertical, and then let the weight of your shoulder blades just drop down, just rest for a second so that we're releasing. Okay, Joy, thank you all, I appreciate that. Good, let's go again. So we're gonna hinge at the hips. Walk your ball forward if you want. Arms are wide, chest drops through. Good, breathe into your abdomen here. Not only does it feel good, but it just opens up a lot. As you exhale, let your chest fall down a little bit more. Let's take one more breath. Good, and then curl the tail up, under, roll up, and come all the way to the top. Good, all right, so for this one, we're gonna end with the forearm on the ball to give you a little bit more support. Let's take your left hand on the ball. We're gonna hinge at the hips, and then just bring yourself out to a place where your forearm is resting on the ball. Your right arm can go down to the other side. All right, from here, we're going to open the arm up like so. If you need to keep it in closer to you, it's absolutely, actually this feels a little better. Let's change it. We're gonna come in this way and then we're gonna stretch the ball out as we thread the needle. Now, maybe you come down to your forearm, maybe you come down to your shoulder. It's totally dependent on your own mobility, flexibility. When we come up, let's press into the knees, start to pull the ball back and then reach up. I kind of like, I'm figuring it out as I go. What's in my head is different than what it feels. So I want you to do the same thing. The objective is that it should feel strong, supported, and like you want to do it again, okay? So let's figure it out. So I, I'm kind of liking this roll and twist. Once you get down into your little uh, thread the needle, take a moment, find the stretch you need, kind of lean into wherever it is you need to. And then I'm starting to come up by pressing my knees down, bending my elbow back, and then lifting up to the top. I think that's what I did. Yeah. 
Let's try two more times on this side. It's probably gonna be completely different on the other side. Such is life, right? Part of our work here is to stay curious. Yeah. Because when you're curious, you also open your mind up to the choices that you have. Last one. When you know that you have choices, you tend to make the ones that are more beneficial, more designed for you and the experience you want to have. Good, let's pull down, press up, reach. Take both hands on the ball again, hinge at the hips, take that long shoulder stretch, see if it's changed at all for you. Oh, so much better. Good, curling under to come up. We'll go to the other side. So I'm gonna try to mimic what I did. I had the elbow bent in here and then I pressed, uh, sorry, reached up <laughs> and then pressed out and then thread the needle. It feels weird on the side. I'm not shocked about that at all. But take a moment, find your breath. Apologies if the mic's getting covered. I think we're okay. Oh, bend your elbow, pressing up. It's like you use everything you got. Drop your weight into your legs, hinge at your hip. Use your eye focus. If you can look under that underarm, it's a great place. Good. And then pull in. Reach. Good. And stretch. Breathe into the tight points. Good, and bend to come up. Let's go one more time on this side. I feel like I'm making progress. I hope you feel the same. Good, and press down to come up. Let's go back. One more hinge stretch with the, with the ball forward. Just be wherever your back, your shoulders wanna take you and then curl under to come up to the top. All right, one more thing on our knees here. We're gonna take our elbows down. So this is gonna be one part upper back mobility and one part stability. Your option is to come down with your elbows on the mat if this is too much. And uh, you can always put your elbows on the couch or on a chair if you need a little more space, okay? So let's see how this goes. So I'm, I like to do this one where I'm kind of holding my the sides of my skull and also pushing the hands against your head. So what happens is we start to shift the ball to the right so your left elbow comes a little more towards center and then you open out to the side. Now I'm pressing my head gently with both sides, but I'm not collapsing down on the bottom arm, really trying to separate my elbows as much as I can. And then coming back to center, finding center, roll the ball to the left as my right arm goes, and then open out to the side. So the little, uh, how do we say this? The tension of this shape, let's roll it to the right, with our hands around it kind of blocks a bit of the lower back, makes it a little bit more upper back dominant, but it's also hard to isolate that upper back. Roll it to the right. And just keep doing your best. Good, let's do one more time each side. Again, looking for what feels good for you today. Good. Rest. Okay. Let's come down on our backs. I'm going to go ahead and just remove the boot for a sec for this one. Grab a drink if you need it. I'm being, uh, I'm having a, like a little memory of lots of 
movement memories happen right now. And specifically, the one that is occurring to me is, you know, I spent my entire life from age three onward and in lots of professional competitive settings and movement spaces, whether it was for dance, sport, or fitness. And uh, there's one thing that has always remained true, and that is when I've been the perfect student and done it exactly the way the teacher wanted it, I've always gotten praise and good feedback. When I've done it my own way, I've always gotten head turns or corrections or negative feedback. And um, I think if there's one thing that I want to do for you, <laughs> it's, I want to encourage you to do it your own way because my God, what better way is there to take up space in the world than to find your way of executing a movement. So I, I'm, it's funny how movements can unlock memories. And uh, so I was just having like rapid flashes of all of these different moments of being like, the, the big quote of my life is, it's pretty Jenna, but it's not Pilates, but it's mine. So I think that's pretty awesome. <laughs> and I think yours is pretty awesome as well. All right, so we're gonna take our heels on the ball. Let's take our arms out to a T. You can have your palms down or up, whatever makes the most sense for you. Engage your inner thighs and let this be a bit of a stretch for your upper chest. So as you let your legs rock over to the side, you're going to keep your opposite shoulder blade against the mat and then come back to center. And in fact, if you wanna, I'm gonna hug the ball in a little closer here. So we're gonna rock over to, let's say the right and the left shoulder stays down. So you might find a stretch in the waist, but I also want you to really focus on keeping your, your collarbones wide. As we rock to the left, the right shoulder blade stays down. Maybe the right arm reaches more to the side. And then we center. And then we go in the opposite direction. And then we center. And we roll. And center. So this is the gentle version, meaning that it's gonna have enough challenge for you to keep the shoulder blade down and maybe like a minimal stretch. So now we're gonna take our right hand overhead to a comfortable position. If your elbow needs to bend, that's okay. From here, roll the ball to the left and reach your right arm like you're reaching for something high overhead. Keep that shoulder blade down as much as you can and then come all the way back to center. Let's stay on this side and do four of them. Think of the diagonal from your knees all the way up, whoops, to your arm and like lengthen it, reach it, stretch it. There's the pop I was looking for. <laughs> because, you know, our shoulders are pretty cool in that they have lots of possibilities for movement. They don't have a big, heavy socket that keeps them from moving really free like our hips do. So we have a lot of different choices in the shoulder. However, um, the, sh the arm is really anchored to the body through all these back muscles and even down into your core. So if you can find that diagonal connection, lengthen it and then also, you know, connect through it, I think it's really nice. Whoa. <laughs> Come on, all the way back, that happens. <laughs> oh, other side. Let's reach that other arm up. You're never going to see me get mad at an equipment malfunction. Technology, yeah, I will, because it's just annoying. It's hell when it happens. <laughs> but you know, if a ball goes away, we're going to laugh about it, because that's the stuff of ease and joy. Good. Looking for the diagonal whole time. I've been posting on my Instagram um, daily delights. And so it's just a scene or a happening or something, you know, completely joyful. And the assignment to acknowledge joyful moments each day is like 
twofold beneficial. Firstly, it means you're on the lookout for them, which means you're gonna find more than one, especially if, you, if, you, if I'm committing to that assignment, which I am, we're gonna do two more of these little stretches. Secondly, it means that at the end of the day, you have more than one to choose from, which means now you're creating an expectation for joy and for delightful aspects, as opposed to rest, the opposite, which you all know can be an expectation for dread or for annoyances or whatever it is. I, for one, am seeing the immediate benefits of the joyful expectation and I ain't going back. So I will invite you to join me on that if you like. Let's take the ball in our hands. We're gonna reach it up overhead. We've been working a little bit on this exercise called rib cage arms. We did it in Pilates on Monday, I think it was. So same idea here, heavy pelvis, heavy ribs. Let the weight of the ball help you reach your arms overhead. Now, if you touch the ball to the ground, fine. Just stay connected to your torso. Don't let your arms noodle out at the bottoms. Keep them really strong. And then when you're ready to lift the ball up, be sure that your ribs are grounded to the mat. Think of hugging your underarms towards the ceiling first and lifting the ball second. So I know like in culture, armpits are not like the most amazing subject to discuss. In shoulder mechanics, they're like miracles, okay? So we're gonna think about them as shoulder me mechanics. So imagine as you're holding the ball above your chest that you've got a laser beam shooting out from the center of your armpit. Maybe right now it's kind of zooming past your knees or past your thighs. As you start to bring the ball back overhead, keeping your rib cage grounded, the laser beam starts to point up to the ceiling. So you wanna maneuver your armpit so that it's facing the ceiling. When you're ready to lift the ball, you press the center of the armpit towards the ceiling to shine the laser beam up and to shine it down. Please let me know if that makes sense to you when you get a chance. Not right away, I want you to do the exercise. But it's that shining of the light up as far as you can. And then when you're ready, press the laser beam up. Suddenly it's an arm exercise, right? And a core one if you're not feeling that just yet. It's that concentration because you can really easily arch your back and make it happen. But we're being specific, aren't we? I think that there is a there we go. Press the underarms up. Good. There's a principle in fitness, movement I should say, mechanics. Let's go one more. That's called specific adaptations to imposed demands. Meaning your body will adapt based on the directions or the stimulus that you give it. So if you teach it how to be strong from the underarms, your brain's gonna start to fire up some underarm synapses and help you with a little more support from your shoulder. If you teach it how to support yourself only and always from your neck, those things might end up happening too. All right, my friends, let's roll onto the side. We're just about here. Ooh. And um, I think for our last little exercise, we'll just pull it all together with a bit of stability. So you may choose to just have a triangle on the ball like so, and you know, just navigate this way. What we're gonna do with our forearms is press into the ball so that our shoulder blades separate and so that the chest kind of is reaching through the shoulder. So it's the idea that the V on your back is just getting a little extra um, messaging. Okay, that's, let's call that level one. No, I don't want to use levels. Let's call that cat level, okay? So you can be a cat. I'm making it up as I go along, it's fine. You can be a diagonal, which is gonna engage a little more core. Or, I'm gonna come up here, you can be 
a plank of wood. Of course, you're gonna tuck both toes under and just not putting weight on that foot. Okay, so three options. One is not better than the other. Choose based on what you need and what's gonna give you the most effective challenge today. All right, we're gonna be here for a few, breathing, sustaining. I'm going on the knees. You can go plank or you can be in kind of your cat box, whatever. I, I kind of failed on that, but you know what I'm trying to say. All right, so find the position that you're gonna sustain. And then with your forearms, press the ball away from you and look for that sense of your underarms facing the ball, your back being wide, your core connecting, and then we're just staying here breathing and embracing the wobble, trying to keep the work away from your neck, trying to keep it in your arms and upper back, certainly your core. is definitely a ticket to quiver town. Even if you're on your knees, even if you're in the box, breathe. Good, staying here for just a little while longer. You can always come back to your knees if you've chosen a plank, if you need a little breast. Otherwise, stay with it. Focusing, finding something interesting to look at with your eyes. We're just at the 10 second mark. Good. Almost there. And finish. Good, let's take that long stretch of our arms again here. However you like. Excellent. When you're ready, come and meet me in a seated position. Let's take our legs into a diamond, take the ball out to the side, and just a little side bend over. We'll do that again. Think of that underarm pointing to the ground, shining that laser down. Good. Take it to the other side. Same deal. Good. Let's do one more. Good. Bring the ball, if you can, right between your legs. Reach and grab it, and then just for a moment, it's like, I don't want to squish the microphone here, but you just can rest on it. Sometimes it's nice if your hips allow you to do that, to just rest on top of it. Good, and then come all the way up. If you'd like to stay rested on the ball, if that was really comfortable for you, go ahead and go there. If you wanna lay on your back, go ahead and go there. If you wanna join me in a cross-legged position, please do. So I'm gonna have just my hands down. We're just gonna do a little breathing exercise to complete class today, a little inward focus. So let's take our gaze inward meaning pull your focus back in. You can look downward a couple feet in front of your body or your mat. You can close your eyes fully. And then let's pay special attention to how your shoulder blades are resting. So if a roll of the shoulder is gonna help you kind of settle them down, so be it. Take a moment to feel the width across your collarbones and reaching through the crown of your head. Remembering our practice from last week where we were able to tune in or out of the sounds in our environments. Let's just focus in on our breathing. We're 
we're going to do a practice today that is called the 81 second breath. And the way that we do this is almost like climbing a ladder. So we're going to breathe in for one count, sustain the breath for one, and then breathe out. And when I say sustain the breath, it just means pause. We'll breathe in, we'll sustain the breath for two, and then we'll breathe out, and then we'll build all the way up to six and then all the way back down to one. So as you continue to pay attention to your breathing, settle any extra tension in your back. Take a deep breath in to prepare. Exhale fully. We'll breathe in. Sustain the breath for one and breathe out. Breathe in, sustain for one, two, and exhale. Inhale, three, two, three, exhale. Breathe in, sustain one, two, three, four, and let it go. Breathe in, one, two, three, four, five, exhale. Breathe in, pause, one, two, three, four, five, six, exhale. Breathe in, pause, six, five, four, three, two, one, exhale. Breathe in, pause, five, four, three, two, one, exhale. Breathe in, pause, four, three, two, one, exhale. Breathe in, pause, three, two, one, exhale. Breathe in, pause, two, one, breathe out, and breathe in, pause, and breathe out. Return to your normal breathing cadence. Notice any differences in the way that you've breathed or the relaxation in your body. And start to let your breathing return to normal without so much attention on it. Maybe swallow, move your jaw around a little. Start to shift in your spine and your shoulders, wiggling fingers and toes. Just bringing the body back into awakened state. If your eyes were closed, start to gently blink them open. Come back together in our space. Yeah. So the ask for today and for the rest of our weekend endeavors is twofold. One, I wanna challenge you to stay aware and almost play a game of identifying which moves feel the most like yours. So whether you're taking a walk or doing a class or cleaning the house or you know shopping or just being out with friends, whatever it is, how do you know when a movement is yours, essentially? It's, it's the investigation. It's not important that you have an answer. It's more important that you ask the question, how do I know that a movement's mine? How do I know this one is mine, okay? So that's the first part. The second is to look for those moments of daily delight. I guarantee it's going to effectively turn the dial a bit um, on 
exactly what you're experiencing in your day. It's such a fun 